Sorry it's been a while. I'm back. Uh, hopefully it won't be quite so long between uh, uploads. Um, I got a, uh, a comment from uh, Duffelpod. Wanted to see the installation of TCPware on uh, VMS, of course. And so let's do that. Uh, here I'm on a, a SmartOS zone. I will explain a little bit about the setup. Take a look at our our simh config. Pretty straightforward. Uh, again, because we're in a Lumos or CFS based system, we're using a Zvol for our disk. You can see here. I highly recommend doing any sort of emulation now on with using ZFS. It makes things incredibly painless, like snapshotting. Um, So you see I have a variety of snapshots of this volume, not taking up much space, but lets me roll back simply if I need to. Let's fire it up. And I've already pre-installed uh, OpenVMS, so you can see from some of my snapshots on some basic configuration. Uh, let's uh, boot the disk here. Uh, so we have, again, a lot of the sets installed, that's not really important. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to unzip the distribution from TCPWare, install it, configure it, and hopefully get it up and running. And TCPWare is from a company called Process Software. They have a hobbyist program, so you can get TCPWare uh, as a hobbyist, uh, similar to the OpenVMS hobbyist program. They have another similar product called Multinet. And they, they do have some differences. They'll offer the same things. I mean, they're, both of them are a great way to get, say, SSH on, um, on a VAX, right? So the later versions of VMS, things like Alpha and Titanium, come with uh, their TCP, comes with at things like SSH. But here's a way to get a more modern uh, set of a TCP and set of tools on the older 7 series VMS. So... over to the directory I put things in. So we got our TCPWare zip file to define unzip. I can unzip. And this will take a minute. It's uh, it is a big package. Uh, so back to some of the differences between TCPWare and Multinet. Um, TCPWare feels a little bit more VMS-y, if that makes any sense. So it's got you know, menu-driven configuration, uh, whereas Multinet feels a lot more Unix-y. Um, I've used both. Uh, I don't know which side I come down on. Uh, some of the multi-net configuration makes a little bit more sense to me because it's more Unix-like, whereas the TCPWare feels a little bit more at home in the OpenVMS environment. Both accomplish the same goal. There are probably other differences, but for my purposes, either one works. Uh, we're doing TCPWare here now. If there's interest, we can do the same thing on multi-net. Because I have this all snapshotted, I can just do a you know, CFS rollback, and we're back to where we're going to start. Uh, the other reason uh, Lumos makes a great host here for doing this stuff is the ability to do um, VNIC. So you you link a VNIC onto your uh, onto your network adapter and uh, avoid any of the whole tap nonsense. Uh, that you can do, have to do in Linux. Um, so I like it uh, for that purpose. So this is this is taking a moment here. Pretty big package, and the host we're running this on, we're running SmartOS on here, is an old off-lease Dell Optiplex 3010. So it's a you know many years old i5 with a whopping 8 gigs of memory in it. I know my, my hypervisor with 8 gigs of memory in it and an i5. I do need some hardware upgrades. Uh, 
which hopefully will be coming 2018. I'm looking at one of getting one of the latest and greatest uh, Intel CPUs, um, and that should offer a bit more a bit more performance. I've been shocked with the memory prices. Memory prices seem to be through the roof these days. Well, hopefully this is this is wrapping up pretty quickly here. But yeah, I, I mean, last time I bought memory, I think I was able to get you know a 16 gig kit for seventy five dollars. Now the same thing's one hundred and fifty, so it's putting me off uh, building any new hardware, at least for the moment. Oh, still going. Still going. Uh, one of the interesting things to note, uh, certainly about this i5, and this highlights some of the difference between the AMD and Intel CPU, um, my my main machine with all the memory is uh, FX8350. And I get roughly the same emulated VAX performance on that running, whatever it is, 4.5 gigahertz with this Core i5, pretty old Core i5, admittedly running at you know, three point four gigahertz, whatever it is. So let's uh, install the pack. Use the VMS install command. Yeah, I'm satisfied with the backup of my system disk because I'm snapshotting it. And TCP where 060. Uh, no options. Uh, for the most part, we're going to take the defaults here. Definitely want the help. We want FTP, service accounting. Definitely want NFS. That, that'll be fantastic. SNMTP, I don't care. I'm sorry, SMTP. Telnet, definitely want SSH. Don't want Cerberus. And hopefully this will this will flow in pretty quickly. And one of the uh, mentioned a couple of the other things uh, VMS related. The RX 1620 will be making a return when I have some time. Uh, I do actually have a second CPU for it now, so we'll have something more modern. Basically, I just need to build a box for it. Uh, I took it out of its very long one uh, U case, and I know it's been a project, it's been you know two year project, but very little time. And I've started a new job uh, recently, uh, last month or about a month ago, I should say. So it's been keeping me a bit busy. But I basically need to build a kind of wood enclosure for it. Um, something that will have a little bit more height because I have fans and I've tested it out. I was able to take those screaming, what, you know, 40 millimeter fans and we'll get good enough cooling replacing those with bigger, more slowly moving fans um, sitting right on top of the CPU heat sinks. So that'll have a pair of CPUs, which will be pretty cool. And I think a decently fast machine for, for VMS. Um, I think I've touched on it in the past uh, about some of the prices for hardware that can run VMS. I mean, VAXs, still remarkably expensive for VAXs. Alphas are insanely expensive. I mean, the difference between Alpha prices and, say, UltraSpark is absolutely crazy. And then the Itanium stuff, which is even newer, I mean, to get... Uh, say an RX 2800 series machine, even a base machine, you're looking at several hundred dollars for something that in the equivalent PC would be a lot less expensive. And that is a little, a little frustrating uh, for people who want to run VMS quickly. Uh, you don't have too many options. Uh, emulation, of course. Here we can do the VAX. Showed the the ES40 emulator. There's also the people who did make Alpha VM free now have a hobbyist bit of software. That's yeah. You have to pay a little bit for it. It's probably it's probably not bad. I haven't tried it because um, I don't want to uh, to spend the money for it. So it looks like we are we are trucking along here. 
And in fact, I'm going to pause this right now, so it's not too much dead air and just me talking about random stuff. So I'm going to pause this, and I'll be right back when the install completes. Okay, we are we're back. Everything's been installed. Uh, it didn't take too long, but better than me trying to fill dead air. So we got FTP, accounting, telnet, and quit that. Let me uh, see the logicals have been added. So we have the TCP where logicals. Uh, another step I did before this was to add the licenses um, from process, and I added both TCP or and multinet, uh, as well as we have all the uh, standard hobbyist licenses from uh, HPE. Uh, so let me uh, log back in here. Right, we have to reboot. Uh, after the reboot, we can configure and turn on the networking. So I don't have the uh, the flag set to go back to the console after reboot. Another nice thing I forgot to mention about using ZFS and ZVols, um, and you can use ZFS without using ZVols. You can just hey, put this in a data set. Um, along with your configurations, etc. There's a few ways to skin that cat. Um, is that you can turn on compression. And because the emulated system is so slow, and in ZFS, LZ4 compression is blazing fast, uh, you can have some really large volumes without using too much space. Let's take a moment to, uh, moment to boot up here. And VMS is, uh, as, I, as I've said before, still has its place. I like that it's really, really secure. The intrusion detection I find super handy. Um, I use it as a way to get secure access sometimes. So I have a have a uh, open VMS sitting out in a, a DMZ, and it's my only open port. And a couple extra hoops to get through, but it's a way I can get into my home network uh, pretty easily. Make sure those logicals still exist. Yep, so we got our TCP where. So we'll do a TCP where configure network. And here we'll set up things like IP addresses, etc. Yeah. We don't have a maintenance agreement. And we're going to want QNA0 because we're a Dell QA. And we'll do it manually. We could do DHCP, which yeah, no reason not to, but we'll do manually because I want to be able to hit this uh, machine with a known address. Call it 231. Call this VAX1. Yep, that is correct. Uh, we don't care about NTP. I guess we're universal time. Not too worried about the time zone. We'll put down our, our full host and domain here. Uh, no DAC net over IP tunnels. You could change that. Uh, yeah, we do want to change the. Conf we don't want it to be a server, but we do want it to be a client. I'll put in our DNS servers list. No, I don't care about the list of domains or number of dots. Yeah, we want the FTP server. Don't want. <laughs> don't want the uh, routing daemon. Don't want IMAP. Don't want IPP, but we do want the intrusion protection system. Very cool. Um, yeah, we don't care about printing. Uh, your options may change here. Uh, for instance, if you did want to do printing, uh, eventually, as I said, when I get my 1620 online, that may be performing some services, even as a home mail gateway. Uh, so I can have yet another, yet another MX record pointed somewhere. And we don't want the NTP daemon. Don't want pop because we're not running mail. But just for fun, we'll turn in login services. Uh, yeah, we'll use equivalence files, shell, and exec. No mail agent. No talk. 
So that might be fun for a for laugh and no, no time. So we're done with configuration. So we should be able to now do this. So we now have our TCP where we're not started. You see, I also have the the DAC TCP IP. Not it's not uh, not configured. So we will do. Do a start net. And so we now have our address up and our node. Let's go over here. And we are up and running with TCPware. Uh, one of the other things to note here. And we get our some messages here is one of the the nice things about TCPWare is you get the configure network menu, so we can configure specific services. So, for instance, if I wanted to configure SSH, it can walk through that and generate keys. Uh, through that process, you can, of course, generate keys uh, separately. Uh, and then you can configure each one of these from a, a menu-driven system, which I actually kind of like. It feels very vms -y. This is what I mentioned when I said it feels vms -y. You get these uh, these menu-driven services. We can start, uh, start and stop specific services. So let's see if FTP is active, because we said we wanted it. And we're in. So that is configuring TCPWare on VMS 7.3. Process is the same if you're on the 8 series. Uh, I have that on my, my emulated alpha, um, actually using TCPWare. And again, leave a comment if you want to see the same for Multinet. Thanks for watching. And as always, I do read all your comments. Sorry if I don't reply to them. Uh, I, I do read and appreciate every single one and probably will make another comment uh, response video, maybe a live stream. Uh, and let me know what you want to see. I mean, I appreciate this. So thanks, DuffelPod, for suggesting TCPWare. Helps give me some ideas about what to do. Uh, one of the things that will be upcoming, I know I've promised and promised it, but it'll probably have to be 2018, just because I had some unexpected medical expenses, pushing out the SparkStation 20 build. And also let me know your thoughts. If you want to, uh, to mail me uh, interesting hardware um, to look at and maybe feature in in a video. I don't know, uh, you know, if it sounds like a good idea to you, the viewers. I I might be game. So thanks again, and uh, look forward to more content coming shortly.